8 million stories in the naked city. And chances are you can only keep up with a fraction of them during your hectic day. Give us a few minutes then to bring you up to speed on what New Yorkers are talking about. This is The Debrief. Welcome back, everyone. Next month is National Honey Month, and you know we, we like to be ahead of the curve here on the debrief. So we want to talk a little bit about that, and we actually want to talk about a concern with the beekeeper, the honeybee population. This is Zeke Freeman. Zeke, welcome to the debrief. Zeke Thanks for having me. Zeke is a co-founder or co-owner of something called Bee Raw Honey. Is that correct? That's correct. Bee Raw Honey. Tell us a little bit about that company first. So we specialize in single varietal honeys. So okay. a single varietal honey means it's a honey that comes from a single floral source wild blueberries, wild raspberries, orange blossoms, for example. And so our beekeepers literally take the hives, they place them in an orange grove, wow. and the bees collect nectar and pollen and make honey from the orange blossom. Okay, and I want to point out that your company's based in Brooklyn. Though. That's right, this we're based New York in Brooklyn, company. that's right, correct. Good. You know, I remember a few years ago, uh, Brian Thompson, our New Jersey reporter, who does a lot of environmental reporting for us, started talking about this colony collapse disorder. And that was a few years ago. It's still an issue. Explain to people who may not know what it is and how it affects all of us, really. Bee bees are in serious jeopardy. Um, over the past six years, 10 million hives have died off. Um, and bees are responsible for $200 billion in crops, mm -hmm. fruits, vegetables, over 100 fruits and vegetables, strawberries, raspberries, um, apples, pumpkins, um, broccoli. Right, so this is how it touches us in our everyday lives. That's okay. right, go ahead. Um, what is the cause? What do they think is happening? What's the research showing us and how come there's no improvement? There, there have been a lot of indicators towards um, and a lot of fingers being pointed at pesticides. Okay. Um, at malnutrition because crops um, don't have, you know, their, there's a lot of pesticides, there's a lot of fungicides. Um, crops don't have flowers blooming around them. Mm -hmm. um, so. The, there's no single issue. However, there is more and more research showing that fungicides, um, which have never been looked at because they were considered safe for bees, in collaboration with pesticides, are creating this chemical load that is just decimating the populations. Right. And ultimately, this leads to higher prices for us as a consumer, correct? It, it, it inevitably will. I mean, I, you know, I, I hope. You can't imagine the day when your children can't e even have strawberries. Right. I mean, bees are literally responsible for that pollination. Okay. If bees aren't there, we won't have those fruits and vegetables. All right. Period. You, so you also want to get a message out about how we as consumers uh, pick our products in terms of organic, in terms of Naturally. when you say family-owned apiaries. Mm -hmm. Talk about that a little bit. So. Um, you know, everyone, everyone knows it's important to shop lo local, right. clearly. Um, you know, you're supporting your um, local, whether it be your local beekeeper or your local farmer. Gotcha. Um, well, so we work with small family apiaries who are around the country who don't necessarily have a local farmer's market. My guy who's in, you know, the in middle of nowhere, Colorado or Wisconsin, um, you know, he doesn't have a local farmer's market where he can sell his honey for $12 a pound. Right. Um, so we work with them to make, you know, a fantastic product. We pay them a, a really premium product price okay. to produce that for us and you know we uh, get it out to the customer okay and just we have a few seconds left but you have a few uh, examples here right? Maine blueberry honey Wisconsin cranberry honey Colorado sweet yellow clover distinct tastes distinct tastes you can see distinct clo uh, colors um, distinct uh, textures okay and uh, different uses you know we use them for cocktails we use them in cooking um, I make a fantastic uh, buckwheat honey miso glaze for salmon. Wow. All yeah. right. And, and just stuff. before you go, Save the Bees Fund. That's something to try and help out with. Please this check out um, the, the Bee Raw Save the Bees Fund, uh, braw.com forward slash save the bees. Braw.com. All right, Zeke, thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks okay. for having us. All right, good. When we come back, we'll get a quick check.